Hello, welcome back to Banner Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, I'm going to um, kind of point out this uh, one add-on. It's um, actually by Jean-Francois Gallon or Pyro Evil. Um, this is version 001 of this Tension Map script. Um, I got it from his blog, um, Blender 3D Artist blog, and you can donate um, if you like over here. Um, this Tension Map version 0.1 is actually this, I think this add-on deserves more attention, and I think this is one of the functionality that uh, kind of like this is like you can think of it like an algorithm or a function that's really really useful and should be part of Blender. Uh, although the usage of it might not seem to be so useful at first, but this is um, if you are like a character rigger, for example, this tension map script is really really useful. Um, let's say if you have like a character doing expression and Whenever it's got like a tension on the face, it should give like a wrinkle. This is the kind of thing that um, kind of um, obvious for what this is for. But there are probably other uh, potential of this script. So anyway, I'll install it already from the I downloaded the zip and then install it into Blender add-ons. I'm gonna turn it on, save it. Uh, this says location properties mesh tab. Okay, then it should belong inside a mesh. I will first of all make a, like a cylinder. I will actually use um, spread chalk together with this add-on just to give it a demo. But this add-on will work without spread chalk. Spread chalk is just like an kind of on top of uh, my uh, pipeline list or workflow. Save as this is a um, spread chalk demo tension map. So this is using the functionality of tension map using spread chalk kind of so I will have a cylinder for example and I will output it right away and this is really really handy for to generate a cylinder because we can easily add subdivision if I turn on the the wire of this guy so okay that's cool maybe too much subdivision let's keep it simple give it a height of 5 and subdivision that's pretty, that's quite a lot. Okay, that's actually, yeah, I guess that should be enough. I'll save it and we can actually switch to cycles, I believe. Um, give this guy material just in case. But anyhow, let's uh, continue. Um, let's find where the tension map belongs. I think it should be somewhere here. I have to kind of dig it. The problem with that add-on is it doesn't have any documentation or anything. So I have to kind of um, dig into it. What does that thing actually do? Tension script. Okay. Apparently, it's uh, under this guy. Tension script. If I turn it on... Um, Maybe we will see additional feature showing up. No, there you go. I just make an update and the tension seems to be showing up. Showing up. TM tension, vertex color. I believe this TM tensions will actually show up if we if we plug the into um, this guy. TM tension. Um, and we can switch to material or texture. If we give this guy attention, maybe I will. I will quickly make a bone setup. Um, front orthographic. Okay. Uh, armature. Okay. I'm kind of familiar with armature. Actually, only I only know the basics. But anyway, I know. Um, we can sort of do this. And this connect to this guy, control P, armature with um, automatic weighting. So this guy now, if you look at the modifier, this guy now um, have the armature controlling the mesh. Okay, uh, so if I go into the post mode, I can kind of give this mesh a bit of tension. So I'll do exactly that. So start from this, I'm gonna give it a keyframe. Uh, lo location or rotation, I think 
all location, rotation, and scaling. And I'm gonna key it again, and then here I'm gonna bend it this way. Ah, funny. That guy is not appearing, but anyway, give it a lock dot scale. Funny thing, this guy doesn't seems to update. Hmm, interesting. Ah, uh, I get it. That's because of sphere chalk. Actually, that's uh, very very dangerous. Actually, I'll just delete this and I'm done with that. I'm gonna reconnect this guy again. This select, remove this, and then this select the bones and connect them again. Now back to the post mode. Now it should be working. Cool. Okay, nice. And I'm gonna keyframe that. And now I'm gonna switch the rotation to the other side. Keyframe it. Keyframe again, and then back to the original. Alt R. Select all. Keyframe everything. So we have some kind of animation working. Cool. Right. So now it's all good. Um, and hopefully um, this material everything works properly so we should be able to see the tensions stuff going on there you go okay I just did something silly there with the with the animations uh, I think I gotta fix that I don't like seeing the I don't like seeing that thing bending the other way. That's a wrong way to do it. It should go up. Sometimes you have to do it like manually to get the in between correctly. Ah, okay, that guy's still doing it that way. Quaternion is supposed to be doing it correctly, but in this case, uh, deletes no key. Clear keyframes. I'll go to animation graph real quick. So it doesn't like this. It's kind of bending in the wrong way. I haven't been using this. Maybe it's uh, in the blue one. Oh well, anyway, don't worry about the directions of the bending. We just wanna look at the, um, the tension map. Just worry about that okay that's the tension map okay one of them is being stretched and the other one's being um, kind of this the wrinkles should happen here and this one should bulge that's normally uh, what you use the tension map for I believe and from the tension map add-on um, we get that by um, We get that for free. There's TM tensions. This vertex color is only some kind of uh, indicator for that, but I believe we also have the TM stretch and TM squeeze. We can actually use this weighting. Um, if I'm not wrong, selecting the mesh and then if I'm doing like a displacement and perhaps give it like a like a texture. And if I select the TM stretch, um, this should actually bulge. There you go. That's that's kind of the thing that I was trying to do. It's doing. It's giving a bulge whenever there's a stretching happening. This bulge actually 
if you like um, see displacement you can add a more subdivision up here and then this displacement can be a little bit more interesting instead of just bulging maybe we can give it a like a some kind of cloud um, hard actually soft soft cloud and then I don't know just some kind of weird bulging so you can see as it's doing that it's kind of doing that it's kind of like an animal there are some like animals that does this whenever it's bulging it's giving all this uh, spiky thing going on it's really weird but that's happened in real life so kind of like a giving a poison based on that but anyway that's uh, that's the main point if you have you have this um, tension map to work on the face whenever a character doing the face motion you can give it like a bolt and kind of uh, wrinkle and whatever whatnot if, if you want to kind of uh, observe this tension thing a little bit better you can use um, stretch for example because stretch can read uh, vertex weighting for example so weight vertex group weight okay this is um, an interesting note I will source the our um, the cylinders called it's called alpha this is because the mesh is uh, output from Spreadshock. Now this nodes kind of works both way. If you plug something on the input, the outputs will not work. If you plug something on the output, input doesn't work. So by default, I think it should be outputting um, some data out. So Spreadshock vertex group give you nothing, of course. But if you look at the this guy and then if we specify tm stretch and tm squeeze this guy will output something squeeze okay that's uh see you see there's some data happening okay that's the main idea and you can use um stretch to visualize the data what it is actually so if we use like a box for example box node and then we use um, viewer node, viewer draw and we're gonna also source our cylinder guy here objects um, objects in get selection, post modifier on because we are um, deforming the mesh we want to see the the result of the deformations we can plug that into the matrices okay cool now we can duplicate our box objects on the mesh so everything still works nicely and then we can make this smaller what's interesting here however is the uh, we can visualize the tension and the the stretching happening the shrinking um i don't know what's the terminology on that so either the using the stretch or the squeeze um for for the matrices for this uh, the scaling of this uh boxes so I'm gonna use matrix in properly here locations based on the cylinder mesh but the scale will be based on this uh, weighting I think we can use reroute here so this is a reroute and we can have factor uh, factor in so this guy should be wired into the scale now you can see okay when it's doing that the box should kind of grow okay you can see that happening okay that's working um, we can actually remap the value uh, to get a better result map range this is the original value we can map the range um, if you are if we are remapping this map we don't need to use the reroute anymore so that's the the result after we remap the value of course you don't need to use box you can use anything so that's kind of happening and you can also use the the squeeze the quiz the squeeze happens there see 
let's say you have like a character and when it's just squeezing some things uh, you try it on your arm if it's squeezing it should be like a, a doing a wrinkle other than wrinkle maybe it's kind of um, extracting some kind of liquid that's kind of useful as well if you like probably you have you can use this um, to emit some particles maybe file save I uh, kind of wonder instead of box we can probably use like a cylinder cylinder with like a spiky cylinder that could be interesting that's a cylinder maybe reduce the this resolution and we can make the top or the bottom to the top so I kind of like it the idea of having spike coming out whenever this guy is the changing the way thing now the spike normal needs to be adjusted I believe the spike normal can be controlled um, by the normal of this guy uh, so the vertex normal do we have vertex normal we do vertex normal vertices polygon should be coming from this guy this is the original cylinder of course and the normal should be controlling the rotation of our cylinder uh, sometimes this is not always so clear but there you go that uh, seems to be working see that's kind of cool it's imagine um, some kind of animal that's kind of doing that spiking <coughs> thing whenever it's doing a like a tension uh, on the body that's I think kind of nice to have so we can control the size of the spike over here uh, maybe it, maybe we should have some little bit of spike but it's just doing that only when it's, it's bulging so I guess that's cool yeah I like that uh, we can make like a, like a caterpillar that's kind of doing this whenever it's bending so I guess yeah that's um, just a, like a quick demonstration of using the tension map um, thanks to what's his name again Pyro Evil Pyro Evil is his um, internet name but John Francois Galan this tension map functionality should be in Blender I think um, it's still like alpha I don't know why maybe because maybe it's a bit slow or I don't know maybe it's uh, it has limitations but uh, even so this uh, now that you can visualize it and you can kind of use it using Sphere Chop or using Modifier, this thing is actually super useful. Um, I haven't used it for like a face rigging yet because I haven't done much um, rigging in Blender actually in production. But this is something that is interesting to try on. Uh, tensions map is uh, everywhere in a, in a big 3D package like Maya and Houdini and Blender. Maybe there are other ways to do this, but I think because this is like visual and interactive you can give this a try give it a go you know it's super super simple to use simply just by activating it in the activate the tension script in here um, this guy can actually uh, be multiplied as well huh. nice I guess you can click here to donate uh, thanks to Pyro Evil for this uh, tension map script I, I don't know how you developing this further but I think this is really cool script and I really like it thanks for the script um, yeah Hopefully you find this live noting useful. Any question, feedback, suggestion, just let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.